Howdy y'all, how's it going? Good evening. We got everything situated for the dudes. Got the new paddock set up for tomorrow. They're gonna be in cell three. They're in cell two. I think I kind of mentioned this when I was, um, one of the two, three weeks ago. When I was kind of going over how I set up the uh, the paddocks to make it a little bit easier on myself, um, I do like a four grid system, just a grid, like four uh, cells. So we're over here now. We're moving south. So it's cell one, two, three, four, and then we move the block over again, and the same thing: one, two, three, four. And we keep moving south towards the ridge. So we put the water tank in cell three. And yeah, it's been working out great. The third time we're doing that. Filled up one one water, filling up another. Salt blocks out. We got a little bit of just like all purpose mineral, the, the loose mineral out for them as well. Um, every two weeks, give them like a uh, one gallon bucket. It seems to be working just fine. When I first started, I used to just leave it out for them constantly. But it got to a point to where they just, you know, started wasting it. So I monitored them a little bit more. I mean, I wasted a whole bag. <clears throat> so I kept monitoring them and it took three days. I mean, I waited about a month before I bought another bag. Um, and then I put it out. I just have like small little, like a one gallon, um, sorry, little one gallon little rubber totes. Actually, I think the other one might be like a two gallon because I filled that up twice. And they're usually good for them for about two weeks. Um, and that worked really well. And I'm staying with that iteration because that way they don't waste it. <laughs> Yesterday, like over here, they really, you know, they were really um, kicking it. It looks like they, they licked it all, kicked it over, and they kind of, you know, were probably digging around for it in the dirt. So, um, yeah. So that works. I know I have to get a different mineral feeder holder for them. I'm working on that though. Um, once I get a little bit of time, we're gonna build an actual mineral feeder for them and we're going to invest some time in that and then also invest in some loose minerals for them, which hopefully I didn't want to, I don't want to start it in winter. I was told not to start out in winter by my mentors, so. And I was kind of late in the season already, so I'm most certainly going to start that next spring, um, probably mid spring after, you know, the grass comes back up. Uh, maybe after shearing, we'll start that just to kind of differentiate a little bit. Um, We'll do like a micron test and whatnot for the wool and the mohair. And then the following year with the loose minerals and everything, same process, you know, spot grazing on the pasture, but with loose minerals, more loose minerals and whatnot. And do another micron test on the wool and the mohair and we'll see kind of like the difference between the two. Uh, but I'm most certainly going to stay with the the loose mineral um i mean that's the one um i really want to do because it's working out great for my mentor and he's really loving it and the company that sells the loose mineral can bill the feeder but man it's it's not that much but it is heavy and the freight is going to be crazy so I'm just kind of like, let me and just build one for now, give it a try. If it works out great, they love it. They, they you know, they, they, once they learn 
how to access it and all that. And then we'll invest in one of those sturdier, stockier, heavier ones. Um, so right now we're just basically in the test phase with that. So that will be in the springtime. Get the minerals here, put them in there, let them, you know, get a feel for it. Let them understand that this, that that's their mineral. So um, for me, I love that concept because one of my other mentors also says that whatever they ingest, they're putting back in the land. So for us, for me personally, I'm working on land. I mean, this is going to be amazing land in a few years. So we're working on that. And I remind the dude every couple of days that, you know, that's our end goal. That's what we're working on. We're building the foundation. So whatever y'all are envisioning for your land, your homestead, your farm, your ranch, you know, I just keep envisioning it, keep believing in it, and it will happen. So I know I will get to the, you know, this being a beautiful pasture where we have enough grass, enough vegetation to last even throughout a drought. And that's my main goal being where I am, our main source of precipitation is monsoon. Monsoon season, we get like two inches of rain in like 10 minutes. So <laughs> that's, you know, I want to catch all that in the soil and keep it in the soil without any runoff. So that's our biggest goal right now. Um, or, yeah, one of our biggest goals at the moment and to keep a stockpile of vegetation to last the winter. Winter, I mean, we get a few snowfalls, an inch, two inch sometimes. If we're lucky, if we're blessed enough, like 2019, we got about a good 18 inches in like mid-March. So yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like that spring, that late winter, early spring, you know, we'll get a big dose of snow. So, you know, so those are like, basically our precipitation for the year two big ones monsoon and late winter early spring i mean they're roughly six months apart so um and throughout the other rest of the year like this past year was awesome though i loved it we had just light drizzles light sprinkles not really a big downpour but we're still waiting for that though um, i'm pretty sure it'll be coming soon um, but still, you know, we got plenty of moisture and you can see there's a lot of fresh grass right there. All that green stuff right there. That's new growth. Um, the only thing is what also we're doing with the spot grazing is all that little stuff. These dudes will walk on it, munch it down. And we're also stimulating the land, stimulating the vegetation for it to grow a little more. I don't have a scientific degree or whatever background, but I just kind of feel like that's what it's doing, what they're doing. <laughs> I'm just going by feel, man. So, yeah, so that's what we're doing. Um, I guess just can go on to my weekly update. We, yeah, because Friday, we didn't have time for a weekly update. We had to go to an appointment. And then from there, we went down to Tucson, met up with some amazing folks. Um, we took our wool and mohair from this spring down there. We got it turned into wool pellets and she experimented on the mohair, turned it into like mohair pellets. They turned out, what she experimented with, they turned out pretty good. But she was kind of like, I can do a little bit more. I know I can get it better. So, um, yeah, probably should have. You know, let her do that and run it through again and compress it a little bit more. But she just shredded the mohair for me and we're just going to put that in the garden and just have that um, soak up the moisture, hold the moisture in the ground, let it break down, add nutrients into the soil in our garden as well. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what we did. We came back, so we're going to be testing that out in the garden. Um, we're going to prep some beds. Uh, the winter garden as well and also for next spring we'll be doing that and also if you're interested in wool pellets we'll i'll be selling some probably half of it just to 
cover the cost of what it costs to make those wool pellets. Um, and next year, you know, we'll probably do more. And we'll just keep expanding on that, keep growing with that area as well. So, I mean, if you're interested, let me know. If you're interested in mohair pellets, let me know as well. Uh, we'll be... I I I want to take the mo. I should have let her keep the mohair and let her just mess with it and refine that for me. And then that way, you know, we can take like the mohair that's not too good down there. Just let her make it into mohair pellets as well. I think that would have been great. So, but anyway, that's what happened. We came back um, late Saturday afternoon and got back and I was like, ha, ah, so it was good to be back Saturday and we came out here, moved the dudes, got everything set, took the water back, filled it up and yeah, we brought it back out here and back to the normal dry now. So um yeah and then we got a few more inspirations, gained more knowledge from the amazing lady that, you know, worked on the wool pellets for us. Amazing fiber person and it's just incredible knowledge that she has and shared with us um i mean it's just a blessing to have to know folks like that in this area and i'm excited to try that method out that she had taught us and showed us um just to you know become a better spinner become a better fiber artist myself so i actually ordered the tool that she had showed me to use that I would really benefit, you know, from. So, I mean, thanks to her and, you know, we are going to be working on some of that. And, yeah, we're going to keep growing, keep expanding our knowledge. And, I mean, that's what we're here to do, right? Just learn something new every day and share it with the rest of y'all. So, once I get a better understanding of that, I will share that with y'all as well and then we'll just you know keep growing together so yeah all right y'all i gotta look at the sun it's almost done i don't know if i'll have time to uh move the paddocks for the gentleman over there i gotta move him to a new area and also move the trailer and the water so oh one other thing if you've made it this far we invested in a tool as well. We got a quad, an ATV. So this would actually um, helps me a lot because with the truck, I mean, that thing is like, what, a, v, a truck is like 6,000 pounds and we're driving every day and we're compacting, you know, the pasture. Now look at this, just to move the trailer is how much it compacted versus that little thing, even though it's a bigger ATV. Oh, where did I drive in from? Let's see. Like a little comparison of it. Yeah, let's see that. They're not as bad. It's not tearing up. It's not compressing. So, yeah, that's one reason why I did that. Make it easier. So, and now every four days we can bring the truck out here to move the water tank. But if the water is at least down to here, I believe that dude can pull it, so. But we're gonna test it out though. We're gonna try it before we even try to do anything like that, so. Yeah, that's our new addition. Um, so, well, I'm really grateful that I was able to get that, so. And it's a huge benefit to the ranch for the pasture and what we're doing, so. It all makes sense, whatever we have here, I always say I have it for a purpose. It's not just because I want it. No, like, it all has a purpose. So, all right, y'all. We'll see y'all later. I gotta get back, move the gentleman, and we'll see y'all later. Oh, um, this post, this video will be also be with the <laughs> my fence video, which I will have to redo um, probably later on over here. Um, somewhere up there where we're going that way um when i was over there my microphone died and i did not realize that i kept putting up my fence so i just sped it up it was just quiet and i was just kind of like you know so 
So we'll, I'll redo all of that. I'll probably do like the teardown, the setup and everything else. So this was just basically the setup that I did. So I just sped it up, put a little bit of music over it and the parts that I did talk, I kept those in there. So I mean, I hopefully you get an understanding of it, but we will re shoot that video, but we'll encompass everything together. So we'll, you know, do a teardown setup and maybe even a move. So we'll do all of that together. And then I'll probably, well, I'll add more of what I had said on that as well. So, so just stay tuned with that. Just enjoy it and, you know, give me a thumbs up or a comment on that video. Um, you know, just say, hey, put up one with actual audio on it. <laughs> Make sure you charge your microphone. <laughs> all right, y'all. I will see y'all later. Peace out, everyone.